Greetings, viewers. We have a brand new pen, Factory Fresh, from Noodlers Inks. This is their latest offering. It is called the Noodlers Triple Tail. It's um, a decently large pen. Let's first of all compare it with some other Noodlers pens. So here's the Triple Tail. This is a Noodlers Neponset. As you can see, it is just an absolute just a hair shorter than the Neponset. Uh, here it is with a Noodlers Ahab. Um, and so that's uh, that's a comparison with some some noodlers pens. Um, let's, uh, for completeness' sake, here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see it's 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 decently bigger um, than uh, than either of these guys. Very comparable to the Neponset. Like I said, just just a hair shorter than the Neponset. At the moment, it is only available in this um, clear demonstrator version. I, I would anticipate you probably may have other f materials and finishes uh, coming in the future if this proves to be a popular pen. It is, this particular material is pretty light, 22 grams <clears throat> all in. <clears throat> um, in terms of the design of the pen, it has a cap band that says Noodle is ink stamped on it. The cap band is pretty much the identical cap band that is on the Neponset. Um, the uh, Ahab has a much wider, more elaborate uh, cap band. The um, clip is uh, also pretty much the exact same uh, clip that is on the Neponset. It has Noodles ink stamped on it, and um, it's a pretty nice, pretty functional clip. One thing I like is that this finial unscrews, and you can either remove the clip if you don't want it at all, or you can adjust it. Uh, let's say if the clip gets bent or something like that, which is always nice. This, like other Noodles pens, is completely disassemblable. Um, it's a screw to uncap pen. It takes one and a half turns to unscrew. Um, in terms of posting, it posts, doesn't post deeply, but it does post, you know, okay, it'll stay on, but the, if you, as you can see, the posting on this is not particularly deep. And you do end up with a pretty long pen when it's posted. It is long enough to use unposted. I do like to post my pens, and it's a pretty light pen, so waiting is not really an issue. The cap has, uh, inside of the interior of the cap, has a sort of an integrated cap liner. In other words, it's not a separate piece, but the, sh the, the interior is carved out to serve as a cap liner. And I can say I've had this inked for a few days already, and it does work to, um, to seal and keep the nib from drying uh, out. Um, the section is a nice hourglass shaped uh, section. Uh, um, again, slightly different than that's, than that's on the Neponset and uh, quite different than the um, than the section on the Ahab, which has this sort of bulged section, which is somewhat polarizing. Some people don't like it, some people do, etc. cetera. Um, the nib it has a actual screw out nib unit. So the nib is in a nib holder, which then screws into the section. <coughs> um, and we'll get to the nib and the feed. Uh, well, we might as well talk about the nib now. So it's a three-tined nib, much like the three-time nib on the um, on the Neponset, um, it's just a three-time nib says Noodlers Inc. But it is shaped quite quite differently. Um, here it is compared to the uh, three-tined nib that's on the Neponset, and as you can see, uh, the shape is quite quite different. It's basically the one on this is the um, this is the triple tail. This is the Neponset, and as you can see, uh, it's um, it's uh, basically a shoulderless uh, nib, um, and uh, I think the flex on this works a bit better than the flex on the Neponset, but we'll see that when we do the sample in a minute. Um, quite a bit cheaper pen than the Neponset, too. I think 55 for this. I think they get about 70 for the Neponset, so it's a bit uh, cheaper. Still quite a bit more than the Ahab, which is in the in the 20s. But the Ahab does has a flexi nib. Um, here's the nib on the Ahab. It is a flexi nib, but it is not. Uh, a three-tined nib. Um, let's just get an idea of nib sizes. So here we compared it. Here it is. Here's the triple tail. Here is the Ahab. So as you can see, the triple tail is uh, a bit bigger nib than the Ahab. And here is the nib on the Neponset. Again, um, the triple tail somewhat complement size, a bit longer. Um, and just for uh, comparison's sake, here is a standard 
a number six size uh, gin hound nib which will throw in the mix so you can get a rough idea so it is sort of like a number six size nib but it is obviously not a standard size number six nib and I would not think you would be able to fit this um, into a number six size uh, pen uh, in any rate the feed would probably not keep up if you were to just say put it in this Jin Hao um, uh, in this Jin Hao um, 140 uh, I'm sorry one this is a Jin Hao 159 if you were to just stick the, uh, the triple tail nib in the 159 I seriously doubt the feed would keep up so the feed is definitely a specialized feed for this pen um, here is the feed on the Nippon so as you can see the feeds uh, the feeds do look quite a bit different it sort of has this elongated feed with a f multiple channels in it um, let's talk about <clears throat> this feed and the performance actually so when I f this the story does have a happy ending so stick with me for a minute when I first got this pen most of my experience with noodlers uh, pens has been they do require some fiddling with when you get them right out of the box that's um, you know been pretty much the case with all of them um, I don't mind that but just keep that in mind um, but I decided to do a little experiment so I inked this pen up straight out of the box didn't do anything to it really wrote poorly I mean bordering on unusable a real poor poor writer very bad flow so I said all right let me try do this incrementally I pulled the nib and feed I washed the nib and feed thoroughly in warm soapy water remove any sort of manufacturing oils or residues re re uh, placed the nib and feed, uh, reprimed it, um, and it wrote better, but still not what I would call good. Um, so we had that problem. So now I said, all right, we need to heat set the nib and feed. So I took the nib and feed out again, and I heat set the nib and feed. Um, I used the process that uh, there's a video that Brian Gillet has, which gives a very good description of how to heat set a nib and feed in one of these noodles pens. I'm not going to uh, review that process here because Brian does a fantastic job. I will have a link in the description to Brian Goulet's video which describes that in all the detail you would need to be able to do that. In any case, I did that and the net result immediately was that it wrote very well. So there is a happy ending here. If you buy this pen, I wouldn't say you necessarily heat, need to heat set it right out of the gate. It might be worth your while rolling dice and seeing if you happen to get one that writes well out of the box. Um, if you do, then you're in luck. If not, then um, I would just recommend uh, removing it. Do what I do: wash the nibbin feed, hot soapy water, etc., and then go right into heat setting it. And then I think I think you'll you'll be you'll be you'll be pleased. Speaking of right out of the box, here is the box. It comes in a just a basic cardboard box. But one thing that is very very and you know it comes in a plastic wrapper. But one thing that is very very nice and sort of common to um, all of the noodlers. Uh, pens is this extremely detailed instruction sheet that the triple tail uh, comes with. Uh, by the way, the triple tail is named after this this fish that you see here, um, and it comes with a complete sort of parts inventory photograph um, and um, really really good uh, filling instructions, um, etc. Et um, and just a really really good. Um, um, really good illustrated instructions and list of, again all the parts and this does completely disassemble now in terms of the filling mechanism uh, i want to detail the filling mechanism for you but this is i've inked it up so i'm going to use the descri i'm going to describe how the filling mechanism works using this naponset it is the identical filling uh, system that the naponset has so what this basically is is syringe filler so you basically would dunk it in the ink and then draw up the ink and it will fill up and it will even fill up this hollow little handle is hollow and it will fill up so it'll hold a decent amount of ink now this pen as you'll see is a very wet pen um, it uses a lot of ink you can eyedropper the triple tail the deposit all the noodles pens are eyedroppable you just simply remove um, this um, this syringe filler and then you can remove the breather tube when you want to replace the syringe filler just a little tip here um, you close this and then guide the breather tube into the the handle there, and then screw it back uh, back down. That'll work. Uh, that will work well. You can silicone grease that. The um, this completely disassembles as well. So you simply unscrew this little cap on the end, um, push this through. It comes out. You can then uh, grease that up, 
and then just simply put it back, pull it through, and um, and uh, close that up right there. So that works uh, works quite well. Again, all these places where there are threads, there are also O-rings. And again, you might want to uh, silicone uh, silicone grease those as uh, as well. So, but that's how the filling system works. So it's essentially you have two choices. Well, three really. I'll go to the third one in a minute. Um, you can either use this syringe filler, you can eyedropper it. The third version is I don't actually have any of them, but Noodles makes a disposable ink cartridge. Not disposable, sorry, reusable ink cartridge that you fill up and you can carry three, four, five of them around if you want, and they screw in to place here and they have a little cap that you can unscrew the cap and then post the cap on the end so you don't lose it. So you basically have three options in terms of uh, filling mechanism for uh, for this pen. And again, everything I've said here, I've been demoing it on using this Neponset, but it is um, it is the case with this triple tail here. So we can take we will take this out here and I'll show you. I don't, I'm obviously not going to. Uh, uh, operate this, but again, you can see this is the same syringe filling mechanism that they use in the Neponce that they have here in the in the triple tail. And again, you can eyedropper it as well. Uh, in terms of this material, this is a really nice resin. Um, it is um, it it uh, it's very nice and crystal clear, which is nice. Another thing that you may be wondering about: some Noodler's pens that are made of resin, like this Ahab, for example, had a reputation that when you first get them, they give off a strange and not uh, altogether uh, pleasant odor. I'm pleased to say that whatever resin they're using for this pen does not have this problem. This had no, none of that unpleasant uh, resin uh, uh, odor at all that some people have uh, seen on Noodler's pens. So no worry about that at all. So that's a little bit about the story of this pen um, and um, the parts, etc. Uh, I guess you're going to want to see it right. Let's see that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a Noodler's triple tail. And as you can see, this is a very wet pen. So if you like your pen wet, uh, go no, uh, look no further. You found it uh, here. But it, I will say this particular nib, at least, was smooth. And uh, it's very pleasant. Etc. Um, and um, I do like the way this writes. Now, of course, what you want to see is it flexing, right? So let's take a quick look at the flex on this, and it does flex. And you can see those three times really spreading out to allow the flex to occur. And the flex is quite good on this. So let's just get some example here. So again, this is this is about as fine as it gets. It's not terribly fine. I mean, you're not, you know, this is not like an extra fine or anything like that. Even if you're doing reverse writing, it's um, it's not ultra ultra fine, but then you start to apply just tiny bits of pressure here, and you get very very wide lines, and they start to railroad there. But that's kind of getting silly uh, in terms of the line width. So if we talk about sort of um, what one can reasonably expect to get uh, is sort of a line like that, um, and um, with no pressure, we have a line like that. So that's a pretty good amount of of uh, of difference uh, uh, of difference there. So one question that always gets asked a lot of times with these sort of modern steel flex pens is, are they as good as vintage gold flex pens? So I'm going to do something really, really unfair from a comparison uh, perspective. Um, so he, this was written with. Um, the uh, brand new Noodler's triple tail pen. Uh, I'm going to do some writing with a hundred year old Waterman 55, just to give you a little bit of a, uh, of, a, of a flavor for what sort of a vintage pen can do. And this isn't even a particularly flexy vintage pen. So as you can see, um, it the amount of flex is 
is, uh, is, is comparable. But one big difference that you get with the vintage gold flex nibs is basically you get a lot of variation without applying pressure. Just the normal slight variances in pressure caused by writing um, will um, allow, uh, you know, some variation uh, in, in your writing uh, line. Now, what you, that, that's one thing you really don't get with these steel pens because you do have to start applying some pressure in order to get flat variation there. So you see here, there is, and this is a subtle difference, but it's an important one between sort of a vintage and a modern flex. This is sort of a, with consistent pressure, you get a consistent line. With a vintage flex pen, and again, like I said, this is unfair. This is a hundred year old Waterman uh, uh, vintage flex, vintage pen. Um, it's a flexible nib, but it's not like a wet noodle or anything. But they're much, much more flexier vintage pens around. Um, but I just happened to just grab this one. But um, you, you can see you do get very subtle variations without even doing anything, without even trying or applying pressure. So that's a big, big um, difference between what you get in um, uh, what you get in a um, vintage pen. Um, versus, say, a um, modern uh, flex pen. So, like I said, in order to really get variation here, you do need to apply that little bit of pressure to get the variation. So, it's just sort of the normal variances in pressure on your writing are not going to produce very much in the way of actual line variation. So that's that's a big, big difference, just to, to sort of manage everybody's expectation here. This triple tail is a great modern flexi nib pen. It will not do what this 100-year-old Waterman does. It just isn't going to do it. But for the money, you can't, you know, you're not going to be able to get one of these vintage Watermans for $55 like you can here. So just keep that in mind as well. So I think that's about all we need to say about this particular pen. Let's talk about this ink I've been using in the triple tail for just a moment. Uh, of course, uh, I have a Noodler's pen, so of course we're going to use a Noodler's ink today. So uh, we have Noodler's, Gruen, Green, Gruen, I guess that's how you spell it, Katkus. And this is a really pretty, pretty shade uh, of green. I really like it. You get some shading and some line variation, um, not line variation, color variation, which looks really nice, etc. So it's a nice, uh, it's a it's a really nice uh, noodler's ink that I like um, that I like uh, quite a bit. Um, and um, it's just uh, pretty green. One thing, and which probably makes it not the best ink to use in a really, really wet pen like this, this does have a bit of a long dry time, this ink, I noticed. So um, maybe uh, on a super wet pen like this, you may want an ink that dries a little quicker. But um, I, like I said, I've, I've been using this for at least a few days with this uh, pen just to try it out. And it's, it's okay, but I just, I really like this ink. It's a pretty, pretty ink. And again, um, you can't go wrong price wise, noodles ink, you get that big three ounce bottle for 12 bucks or so in the US, which is a really, really, really good deal. Um, and, um, and like I said, I, uh, I definitely, uh, I definitely like it. Um, that's what this ink looks like here on this um, Rhodia paper. Let's do a quick, quick look on what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, so like we said, this ink is Noodlers. Gruen. Katkus. And um, both on the Rhodia and on the Tomoe River paper, you definitely get some really, really nice shading and a variation from a lighter to a darker shade of green. And like I said, it's just a pretty, pretty shade of, uh, of, uh, of green. Um, 
Speaking of greens, uh, that might be my next color uh, theme video coming up. I know I've done a blue, I've done a black, I just did an orange recently. Um, I'm debating whether to do a brown or green for my next color uh, episode. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what that turns out to uh, to to be. But I'm going back and forth between the two of those. So anyway, that's what this looks like. Again, pretty ink. Um, really nice pen. Like I said, I did have to fiddle with this. So again, if you want a pen that works first time every time, right out of the box without having to mess with it, you, maybe this pen isn't for you. But if you're willing to tinker just a little bit. Um, I think the results have been really, really good. Um, so anyway, um, I think I've talked for way, way too long. Um, in any case, um, that will, I think, do it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed. I know I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, please subscribe if you have not yet done so. Please leave me a comment. Keep those thumbs up coming. And as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.